Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to session two of track two. We have with us Dr. Rupa Manjari Ghosh, and I welcome her. My name is Anu, and I'm from ZBI Academy, and I will be uh, moderating this session. So a little bit about ma'am. So Dr. Rupa Manjari Ghosh has served as the Dean of School of Physical Sciences at the Jawaharlal Nehru University, Delhi, along with many other important academic and administrative positions that she has held. She has held several visiting faculty positions on invitation abroad and delivered numerous invited research seminars. Recipient of this three Shakti Samman for her original contribution to science, she serves as an expert on the Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, committees in physical sciences, and in many, many central and state universities and institutes. She has also served as chief advisor for NCRT science textbooks. Um, you can see the work definitely in the science textbooks uh, right after NCF 2005. I personally look up to her and it is with immense happiness that I welcome you, ma'am, and eagerly look forward to getting insights from you on rethinking innovation in education. So uh, if there are any questions, you can use Q&A section and we will address those questions once ma'am finishes her session. So without much ado, ma'am, all, all to you. The stage is yours. Thank you so much, uh, Anu. It's a, it's a pleasure to uh, talk to uh, the participants today. I congratulate uh, Zibia and Observe Now for doing this. Uh, it's a, it's a uh, big topic. It's kind of a dream one. So let me start sharing my screen. And uh, the, uh, this was actually uh, told to me, you know, to talk about rethinking innovation in education. And uh, it's the concept of a, a dream university. So uh, what I'm going to do today to walk you through some of these concepts of dreams uh, in the university uh, that currently I'm associated with, uh, Shibnada University in uh, the NCR. Uh, this is only a nine and a half year old university. We are in our 10th year of existence right now. Also as the co-chair of the FIKI Higher Education Committee, we had certain perspectives. And uh, being part of a new university, the advantage is obvious that you learn from the wisdom of others. So all the experiments we have been doing elsewhere try to bring that and more to this university. And I'll talk about that dream. Uh, our founder, Shiv Nader, probably you are familiar with the name, uh, the HCL founder also. So in, uh, when the president of India was visiting Shiv Nader University in 2016, January, he made a statement that this is a, uh, Shiv Nader University is a collective dream of many, including mine. Now, that collective dream is what we are going to talk about. So it's only befitting that I take you through the journey and I'll talk about the context. Uh, I'll start with that, actually. So, so these are dreams that you do not see when you are asleep, but the dreams that do not let you sleep. You probably know who I'm quoting. But without uh, you know, uh, taking any more time, let me take you through a short journey. So first, a kind of a local context global in its outlook, but also deeply rooted in its context. Context number one, you cannot avoid today. Uh, it's really uh, the context that was provided by COVID-19 pandemic, the challenges that came with it, and every challenge, you can look at it as an opportunity. Uh, so came March 2020, the camp campus lockdown, national and international travel stopped, Board exams got stalled, and entrance exams, our own SNU side, JE, et cetera, got stalled. Placements got deferred. Higher studies in foreign universities became uncertain. In-person collaboration, be it national, international, academia, industry, or private, public, everything got stalled. So that led to the first question about innovation. That's the topic that uh, I'm going to talk about. So what's the innovation in the delivery of education? We have been talking about it for some time. The pieces that were already there in pre-COVID world and whatever the pieces you got right, you are fine post-COVID, but whatever pieces you had not got right pre-COVID, those got amplified in this period. So innovation in the delivery of education. And later I'll talk about innovation uh, through education. So in the first context, uh, let me just proudly say what was the SNU? Uh, response 
So most of you would be familiar with uh, the, the, the phrase VUCA, you know, uh, V for volatile, U for uncertain, C for complex, uh, A for ambiguous. That's our world. At Shibnada University, we responded to the VUCA world with our VUCA. That's V for vision, U for understanding, C for clarity, and A for agility. And we took immediate steps so that our students' learning and engagement are least hampered during this period of isolation. Our courses in PhD Viva VUCA, industry academia talks, admission process, concerts and club activities, everything moved to different online platforms. So that's really uh, delivery of education got completely changed. The first response for COVID impact was fully online classes, uh, mostly live sessions, not recorded ones. And we are one of the first in India to go fully online for teaching learning. Uh, we also had, uh, we ended the semester and had a virtual graduation day mid July last year. I believe it's one of the first in the country. The advantage, of course, of a university like that, you have to be technology enabled, your LMS, etc. You have to have forward thinking faculty and students. Without that, I couldn't have done that. And very committed support, particularly for IT. The major lessons that were learned is that technology enables, but it also limits. So I'm going to elaborate on this uh, shortly. But going forward, uh, it's understood that a hybrid or a, what we call blended learning is here to stay. Uh, we have also learned that a vibrant residential campus cannot be really replaced. Uh, our students are eager to come back to the campus. And already we are in the process. PhD students have been in the campus. Undergraduates are now coming, coming back. So I don't believe in knee-jerk reaction. Nothing much has changed. But the delivery of education suddenly got changed to this uh, digitized online mode. So what is the future? Uh, hopefully in this year with the vaccines and I think uh, the pandemic, um, you know, becoming a thing of the past, maybe uh, later this year. Uh, how are you going to look at this dream university? So for that, I want to show you this uh, cartoon. I'm sure many of you are familiar with this. And I quote Albert Einstein. Uh, I'm a physicist by profession. So you have to excuse me for uh, falling back on Einstein pretty often. Th this one is not about physics. So the quote is that everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. And that's what we have been doing in our education system in the name of fairness, for a fair selection, for a fair exam, we have asked everybody to take the same exam. And so whether you are a monkey or a penguin or an elephant or a fish or a dog, you have been asked to climb a tree. So this is, uh, of course, uh, ridiculous. And this is something that is amplified by the cartoon. So the summary of what I'm saying at the end of context one is that learning is a designed endeavor. One size, that is one model or one approach, does not fit all. Now, that's kind of common sense. But are we, have you been practicing that? So technology enables, but it also limits. Uh, one limitation that I saw all of last year is that uh, you depend too much on available technology. And even today, the, we are on a technological platform. And technology is as good as the people who are using it. So uh, pedagogy uh, should not be hampered by your availability or choice of technology. So pedagogy should lead to the choice of technology. People should, uh, on the other side, should have enough, uh, have enough talent to actually provide you with the kind of technology or the kind of pedagogy you believe in. And it should not be the other way around. It should not be that available technology is dictating your pedagogy. That's a disaster in education. The other lesson is, of course, what I have touched upon. That there are two kinds of courses. Some can be 100% online, including AI. And some other are, at best, 70%. Um, there are also two kinds of students, maybe. Uh, online is good for some and uh, not so good for the second class. So because education is not about just getting a degree certificate and accreditation. Uh, so uh, the campus experience, the 24 seven learning, social engagement, this is also uh, you know, a 360 degree education. And that's the, the real meaning. So we must make the best of two worlds, online and on site. Uh, that's the hybrid model. And as somebody recently was saying, it's the brick and mortar uh, and uh, is the you know, pun on that is brick and portal model. 
So that's the hybrid model that you know you make the best of both worlds. Technology brings in, uh, you know, it enables you to even to tune the content to an individual learner. It also limits, and uh, we should be aware of uh, these restrictions. And the digital divide, of course, is a real thing, and I'm not going to get into that uh, right now. It's a serious problem. It has to be talked about uh, at the government level. Uh, I love this quote, so I'm just showing it to you. Uh, technology will never replace great teachers, but technology in the hands of a great teacher can be transformational. I cannot agree with that more. So the role of the teacher has changed from being the sage on the stage, the the sole, uh, you know, custodian of uh, information, to the guide by the side, where you are the mentor, you are the facilitator, you are the dream facilitator. So that's what the dream university is all about. So, uh, the context, so the context one was about uh, the pandemic and how it has accelerated the delivery of education through the digit in the digital mode. The second context is uh, come 29 July, we got the national education policy. This is after a very, very long gap. And uh, this leads to the talk of innovation or invention in my word, through education. So not innovation in education, but through education, what do I get to do? And what is the context? I'm quoting it from the very beginning of the NEP. It says the aim must be for India to have an education system by 2040 that is second to none with equitable access to the highest quality education for all learners, regardless of social or economic background. Now that's really a tall order. So how do we actually get there? The policy is full of that. And I have actually managed to put some quotes in here. But uh, the, the basic thing maybe is that uh, the fundamental principles that will guide both uh, the educational system at large and individual in, uh, institutions within it are uh, creativity and critical thinking to encourage logical decision making and innovation. So it talks about startup incubation centers, interdisciplinary research, et cetera, et cetera. So I'll just uh, uh, not talk about it, maybe not read it through, but just tell you again, the dream university uh, experimentation that I have been involved with. So in this one slide, it's uh, Shivnada University's journey since 2011. Uh, that's when we started and it's an ambitious long-term initiative of the Shivnada Foundation. So I say this because, you know, uh, there are no shortcuts to excellence. Um, we are looking at an enduring institution. I'm not looking for uh, fruits tomorrow or the day after. So it has to be built brick by brick. And that's what we have been involved with. The three phases, phrases that I love to describe Shivnara University by. One is that it's truly it has a comprehensive multidisciplinary curriculum. So uh, you see some colors that I put in there. Uh, all of you are familiar that innovation in the past century was uh, had, was dictated by STEM subjects. STEM, uh, S-T-E-M, uh, science for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Uh, this century, uh, the innovation would be dictated by what I call integrated STEAM. That extra A stands for art and design. Don't take it literally, but basically it gives you the sense, I hope. But I also would like to change the E to stand for enterprise education. And that's the need of the hour. So an integrated STEAM plus model of curriculum where you, uh, you, education is not in silos, but a complete multidisciplinary curriculum. Uh, we are not an IIT, we are not an ISAR, we are not an IAM, but we are all of these institutions under one umbrella. Uh, where students learn from, their, uh, from the stalwarts in each. No department is a service department. And they have the choice and the flexibility to experiment with the, the subjects they wish to pursue. And once you find your passion, you're likely to excel in it. So that flexibility is important. So if you have this multidisciplinary curriculum, there is no fight between breadth versus depth. It's actually breadth and depth. You have to be good at something, but then you must have the full spectrum exposure. So once you have multidisciplinary curriculum, you're fortunate to have an interdisciplinary uh, work coming out of it. 
So interdisciplinary here is not fashionable, superficial. It's not at the cost of disciplinarity. And I take pain to mention this uh, often. So uh, that's, the, uh, the, that's the model. And I'll maybe tell you a bit about why in the next slide. We are also, the second one is research and innovation focus. Um, it's not just faculty, postdoc, and PhD students are doing research. Uh, even undergraduates are deeply involved in research and exploration. It's fun. And you construct your own knowledge in some way. Even if you are, do not become a researcher, even if you become an entrepreneur, if you go for higher studies, of course, or if you take up an industry job in the R&D, this experience comes very, very handy. Uh, Student-centric, because as I said, we believe in active learning, where uh, we don't try. We try to avoid what I am doing, uh, or you know, talking to students in the radio mode. Uh, so kind of a holistic active learning where students are responsible for their own learning. So teachers are mentors, as I said, guide by the side. So the onus of learning is put back on the students. So everything is student-centered. The university revolves around this theme. So comprehensive multidisciplinary research and innovation focused student-centric. Liberal studies, which is the catchphrase you hear every bit, everywhere, I wanted to, uh, liberal arts is what people say, I call it liberal studies, and for me, liberal means uh, not in silos, that it means free, that means without boundary. And again, uh, one quote from Einstein, and I, it's an old thing that I keep mentioning, that value of an education in a liberal arts college, you can call it liberal studies university, and it would describe Shivnada University, the value of an education is not the learning of many facts, which today we have available at the click of a button, but the tra <clears throat> training of the mind to think something that cannot be learned from textbooks. Now, this is Einstein's response to Thomas Edison's uh, opinion that a college education is useless. That reminds me of my generation. Uh, you are what you are, not because of the system, but in spite of the system. Uh, so we wanted to change that in the dream universities that I'm talking about today. So the training of the mind is one skill that never goes obsolete uh, when the in the future of work scenario. I hope you are familiar with this panic that I call future of work, that machines are taking over with Industry 4.0. Cyber physical systems are going to replace humans. Uh, machines are acquiring human abilities. Earlier, it used to be just rote jobs. And now with uh, AI, artificial intelligence, is also the thinking jobs. And education, I believe, must uh, be linked with livelihood issues at the school, college, and university level. So it's a, it's a complex debate, but uh, essentially, uh, I, uh, you know, we have been discussing this a lot. You may have seen some of my write-ups here and there. Basic question is, so will an algorithm take your job? What are humans still good for? This is a very, very basic question, and you are being actually forced to talk about all of this. Why? Because... Uh, if I'm training my, you know, if the goal of my university, goal of higher education, cannot be to produce uh, human beings skilled in doing what robots can do. So if you are industry ready today, you would be jobless tomorrow because that industry may just disappear. So how do you take care of this? How do you prepare your students in a dream university for a future that is totally unknown? So you figure out if you answer this fundamental questions that I have put in red in here. Will an algorithm take your job? So what are the humans still good for? Social intelligence is far from being fully automated. Humans also have an edge over machines in creativity. And uh, this uh, is what is what drives this unique uh, undergraduate curriculum we have, a very multidisciplinary, and everything else that I talked about, a very diverse student body, our focus on research, but of course, everything else is being driven by a world-class faculty. So the concentration is actually on the faculty. If you get that piece right, everything else follows. So, um, you know, I would not spend too much time on it. Uh, but basic point is, in some way, it is to tap into the potential of connecting your left brain, which is verbal, analytical, and orderly, to the right brain, which is visual and intuitive. Computers can code the left brain. Uh, the programming of the right brain is still not known. So I think if you go get into creativity, design, and innovation, 
you promote project based or problem based or purpose based learning then maybe you will have an edge with the machines and that's what we have tried to do uh, recently have created a design and innovation experience at, uh, at snu uh, with uh, gosol systems and we had a grand online opening because so uh, the hybrid model i was talking about uh, you know we have not really stopped doing anything that we plan to do in this year because of covid so all this dim university system will work only if you have a robust network of peer advisors faculty mentors departmental advisors and heads and of course directors and the vice chancellor is there and a professional wellness team so these are all essential pieces of uh, the system i speak a little bit on innovation and entrepreneurship so the question here that you would be asking is are you finding your dream job or are you creating the dream job and this is the the new thing that in the universities we are trying to do our students have actually done very well without any official incubator earlier so from the very beginning we had one i have mentioned here in fido um, by set up by two of our bitech students while they were at snu and is doing very very well you can look that up uh, a systematic way of handling that is through an in incubator and even at the very beginning i've been saying that we should uh, move away from the slogan make in india which gives you a sense that indians are uh, factory workers to so move from make in india to make by india and by india so indians as innovators and uh, towards that end we finally in 2017 when niti aayog uh, aim hotel incubation mission floated a competition for an incubation center of these 3600 odd applications uh, private public uh, we are also one 10 greenfield ones were chosen we are the youngest in that lot and i walked out with the maximum money so uh, the hotel incubation center that is hosted by snu uh, really is doing this uh, entrepreneurship uh, the the push in a systematic way i don't want to i don't have too much time so let me just move to one important point uh, it's not just play with english invention versus innovation but i believe that education should accelerate invention uh, while innovation will continue to show up from unexpected quarters as well it could be tweaking of a spec to create uh, something that would have commercial value so uh, to emerge as a knowledge economy deep education and research is a must and it must be in their top priority so i will not give you the data you can look that up but uh, universities must play a critical role in creating the talent pool for research and generating high quality research that's almost a definition for me so um, how do you do that india could capture a higher state of uh, you know the the share of global knowledge based work by leveraging its demographic dividend but i often say this demographic dividend will become a demographic disaster if you do not put adequate focus on higher education and if the research quality is not globally benchmarked so uh, as i said that you know you can move it down to all the way to uh, an undergraduate students 17 18 year olds are our assets really and even the national education policy envisions a, a national research foundation to promote funding and seed research and innovation in universities across all disciplines including social sciences and that's maybe the only way to make india a global hub hub of r&d uh, so we also need uh, robust industry academia partnerships to translate the generated knowledge into applications so uh, there is a need to nurture an end to end research ecosystem in the country uh, and i emphasize on basic science research and let me take a minute to talk about that this is a serious issue uh, i have an old quote uh, you know slide i have just updated that we wanted flying cars instead we got 140 characters this quote this 140 characters in this quote refers to the length of a twitter post at that time uh, so the real question is that what should we be emphasizing on our best minds should be engaged in science and technological development may not be uh, the flying car but whatever we need and not just in improving social media algorithms like twitter so when food and energy cost have been going up healthcare has been highly inadequate climate change threats are here and now and yes 
transportation on earth or to space has not become more efficient so you know last few days uh, the media has been carrying a lot of stories uh, elon musk co-founder and ceo of world's leading electric car manufacturer tesla versus amazon ceo jeff bezos so one hardcore physical system the other uh, you know an e-commerce uh, platform uh, so who is the world's richest person according to uh the, the 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 way that they they judge now i'm not going to get into that debate but the point is musk uh, is working to revolutionize transportation both on earth through electric car maker tesla and in space via rocket and producer spacex it's really curious that uh, this is what is coming to be real uh so today in the higher education space while it's fashionable to talk about liberal arts on one hand and disruptive technologies of ai ml vr on the other we must remember that liberal arts is in incomplete without physical sciences and the disruptive technologies alone will not be able to solve all societal problems so you need uh, hardcore science and technology and of course ai today will be a multiplier and that's really is the point and if you look at the past science has shaped our world and today the global pandemic has reinstated the importance of basic and applied scientific research and also a stable research infrastructure and funding this is needed for survival and sustenance so uh, we sort of come full circle on this and i really uh, strongly urge that universities control to address this issues to strengthen the science research ecosystem in india often you hear about the spending and i already talked about the national research foundation idea but needless to say there should be accountability in some measurable form a funding must be increasingly directed towards building strong foundation that may create new knowledge but it's not a wastage of taxpayers money or philanthropic money so uh, the plan has to be there that we need to have policies as well as outreach efforts to talk about uh, the 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 op tremendous opportunities ahead if you start studying again the depths of physics chemistry biology or mathematics and statistics so it's curious again that while attending the university of pennsylvania elon musk pursued a double major in physics and in business at the wharton school while his business education was excellent Elon admits that he definitely preferred physics. So I made my point and I'll not harp on that anymore. We clearly as a country also we need to redouble our, our efforts to improve the status of the science and research ecosystem of the country. And so expenditure is there but training of human uh, abilities that takes little longer. And so the question I am asking is what's the next big real invention we need to have for india and the human race it could not be the next uh, twitter it, it cannot be the next mobile phone but it is something much bigger that i have already hinted at so uh, to end i uh, wanted to emphasize kind of an uh, ideal framework university score is about realization of human potential when you ask the question how different kinds of universities emerge for me the definition of the university is the one that not just disseminates knowledge but creates knowledge that is research so like before university education should drive and not just respond to industry or technology this happens when the education sector is lagging behind technology so my dream university will actually drive uh, this system of uh, the ecosystem of partners you know around university university has to be the driver of this ecosystem universities also have to be the quality controller of this ecosystem of partners around the university so for that we need competent leadership we normally don't talk about it in this country and of course resources and not just financial but intellectual resources to enable the focus has to be on faculty um universities are zones of openness you don't look at what's happening tomorrow but you have a long term view uh, and that cannot happen unless you open it up universities will also nurture the hopes of a sustainable world if i can leave this world habitable for my children and grandchildren 
uh, for more, uh, you know, food, clean air, clean water, and healthcare and other stuff, then that's the real threat. If universities don't get into this game, I don't know who else will. So that's my uh, dream university. And uh, with these words, uh, I thank you very much for your attention.